where exactly is this happening? It seems to be in the northwest region particularly. It's in the northwest, Wendy, but it's really in pockets all around the country. Um, public health experts will tell you that a lot of families have had their concerns laid to rest about vaccine and any negative implications of them in the last several years. But they're very persistent pockets in Oregon, Washington State, Colorado, New York, um, where you are, where families just aren't just aren't sure. And so the number of religious and philosophical exemptions are ticking up in these places. And let's let's back up a little bit for people who can't imagine why anyone so, wouldn't vaccinate their children. For people who don't remember what it was like to have a severe outbreak of a disease that you actually had to be concerned about. Tell us the rationale again, the concerns on the health side, and again, uh, reiterate sort of what's happening on the religious front. Sure, and, and you mentioned, Wendy, one of the main things. A lot of people, and I talked to a half a dozen pediatricians who said this, a lot of parents don't remember anyone who even, they never had chicken pox, they may not remember um, or have ever known anyone who had polio. So it's, in some sense, it's at a remove. But if you remember in the late 1990s and early 2000s, there were some studies that came about, out about potential negative implications from vaccine, potentially linking it to autism and other things. And that, and you begin to see the, the rates of parents vaccinating kind of trending slightly downward for a number of years. Some of those studies have been um, debunked in the last several years. The vaccines have gotten a lot better, according to the experts, but the, per, the fears are still pervasive that the, the risk of getting vaccinated don't outweigh the benefits to the family or to the larger community. And so in these pockets where the parents are not vaccinating their children sort of in droves, what's happening in terms of, uh, of, of out outbreaks? Have we seen anything like a measles outbreak? And actually, Valerie, what is the percentage of people who need to be vaccinated in order for us to sort of have a, a safe threshold. Sure, and measles is kind of one of those bellwethers of disease. Um, so a lot of times we talk about measles as just an indicator. But last year we had 222 cases of measles in the U.S. and that's the most in, um, in 17 years. So it, it is, there are implications. And for example, there was a, a measles outbreak in San Diego um, with a kid that traveled with his family to Switzerland where that he contracted measles brought it home and went to a school where a lot of parents chose not to vaccinate. And a dozen kids in that um, in that school and that uh, his doctor practice came down with the measles and a couple hundred more, I believe, were, um, were quarantined. So what happens in these scenarios in terms of whether the government can mandate that parents actually vaccinate their children before they can send them to school or to say you have to keep your kids home? You can see sort of the ripple effect of this potentially. If so many parents stop vaccinating their children, how could anybody actually send their child to school and feel safe about it? Well, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a troubling thing, I think, for public health officials, because, as we all know, um, public budgets have been under pressure and it's a very costly thing per child to to quarantine. It's a very costly thing to get the word out. So there, there's that aspect of it. But it's also just a, a scary thing for communities. There was I don't know if you if you remember last month, but there were a couple of people in Indianapolis who had contracted measles and they went to the um, Super Bowl village. And, and around thousands of other people who could have, other people who could have been infected, and there was a great worry about that. And is, is in terms of the religious people uh, not vaccinating their children for religious reasons, has that grown uh, in past years? Because certainly those concerns could have always been around, and it's the health concerns that seem relatively new. <laughs> or do you do you see from your reporting and talking to these public health officials that they say these religious exemptions are are growing in number? It's it's the religious and philosophical exemptions, and there's a little bit of a gray area between those two things. Um, but the met, there are a small number of medical exemptions. So for example, if a child has leukemia, um, it, it's recommended that they not get vaccines because they don't know what the possible interactions might be. But it's the it's the concerns, the philosophical concerns that bleed over into the religious arena that are really uh, on the on the rise.